What's up guys? Welcome back to Lake Branch Farms. My name is David and in today's video we're going to be starting some seed for some more uh, fall or cool season crops and some stuff that we're going to overwinter in the high tunnels. And I've also got some stonehead cabbage uh, starts that I want to transplant out into the garden. I got a few rows down here that uh, that we can utilize for that. Um, it's been a few days and it's rained on these rows since I pulled them up so I want to re-pull these rows you see towards the end of the garden here this is where we had our egg plants and we had another plant in the cucumber so we clean all this up and we're probably going to use weed mat on this um simply because i've got some crops down here that we just started we just transplanted and we already seen some weed pressure on them and they haven't been in the ground but a couple of weeks so i'm gonna give you a shot of those guys here in a minute yeah this area of the garden here is uh the last of the warm season stuff i actually have kind of cordoned off this area over here because this is where we're going to put the next tunnel you can see the stake at the end and the stake here we kind of got this area reserved to put this tunnel up when it cools off a little bit more and we just bought two more tunnels um they're 100 foot or what are 92 feet and uh we went and purchased these from some people that they frequent the market on thursdays that we go to and uh they mentioned that they didn't think this year they were going to start back up with them and ask us to come look at them and you know, we went down there and looked at them. Not super nice people. We went and looked at the tunnels and they were in decent shape. I mean, they were used. I mean, they, you could tell that they had been in service for, you know, several years. And um, I asked him what he had to have. He told me, and I wasn't gonna argue with his price because it was fair. And I didn't want to insult him because I knew he was a hardworking man and he had put a lot of energy into it. But me and Betsy went up there last week and we took the heaters out so i got these on the truck and i got the shade cloths for both on the back of the truck so i got to get all that stuff unloaded today and put away but we're going to utilize the bigger heater in this tunnel the the big tunnel that we got and we're going to use the other smaller heater in this tunnel that we've been working on so yeah a lot of stuff been going on here the past couple weeks um reason we kind of late with videos and haven't been putting anything out you know back early august me and Betsy went on a little small vacation and at the time we had everything for our fall cool season plots ready i mean it was big enough to go on the ground and all we were going to do was come back on vacation and put everything in the garden it was still pretty warm then but when we got home we found out that hurricane debbie or tropical storm debbie whatever that storm was that come through here actually dropped a whole lot of rain on our area and the wind got up pretty high so yeah the wind must have got up pretty crazy because uh when i got home see this big hickory tree it was laying over my fence my electric fence both goats got out days in butterbean both got out and they eat every one of the plants we had and i actually started working on the plants we had in the ground so if i got some i think i got some pictures if i do i'll start plugging them in here yeah but they just flat out you know annihilated everything that we had ready for the garden and it kind of put me in a bad mood it, it really did all that hard work and time and energy into something and just to have something like that crazy happen but you know about a week later um i got my trays out and you can see this is from our second plant and all these trays you see stacked up here yeah that's how much we put in so far and i'm gonna give you a shot of everything down the hill and on the side but yeah this is the tail end of what we had i had this rack full i had this rack full and i had my big 18 foot trailer full so we've already planted every bit of this everything you see now is what we're kind of waiting on to get a little bit bigger and some stuff i've restarted stuff that i know is going to go in these tunnels when it starts cooling off here in about two months but um you got some leftover tomatoes which those are going to go in a tunnel that's going to be our fall tomato yeah i lost every one of my fall tomatoes i had to restart them they are b these are bhm 589s we got some broccoli i think this is yeah emerald crown Got some uh, cauliflower, absolute, some more cauliflower, leftover rutabagas, and stonehead cabbage. All this is kohlrabi, beets, Brussels sprouts, and leftover kohlrabi, green onions, leftover cabbage. So other than that, everything is in the ground and off to the races. So I'm going to start on this side and kind of work my way down the hill. So just bear with me. So this is a tunnel we've been working on slowly but surely. We had tomatoes in it, we've had cucumbers in it, we've had a little bit of everything in here, but I'm kind of working my way to cool season crops because we're gonna close this thing here 
in in about a week or so so lettuce got a little bit of kohlrabi on the end of the row more lettuce this is grown big grown for heads um kohlrabi i just planted this yesterday and i got to clean these two rows up here i'm think i'm thinking more than likely we're gonna be uh bright light switch charge or something along those lines and over here leftover green onions which those will be coming out here pretty soon and i'm gonna put another row of carrots here there's a row of carrots that's a row of winter boar kale these two rows used to be cucumbers i'm gonna take those out i'm gonna put carrots in two rows of peppers these were stragglers that i had just left in trays and i just plugged them in the garden and i'm gonna be honest with you they're putting on some impressive peppers it to be field peppers and then a uh pretty rough looking row of cucumbers um like i said we have been hit with a lot of humidity over the last two weeks though it's been pretty comfortable around here it's uh it's been the low 80s just a tick of humidity not much um comfortable i mean enough to work in so we've been getting a lot of stuff done so i'm gonna take you down here i'm gonna show you what's in the tunnel right now and then we'll go down the hill so everything you're seeing right now is what we're going to carry to market throughout the fall and some of the winter now we will replant stuff in the tunnels for winter production um it'll just be kale um kohlrabi lettuce greens radishes things like that stuff that i call them low light loving plants things that are growing low light and uh, celery things like that um our tomatoes will be done peppers will be done all of the stuff that we can grow throughout the year we won't have any of that but it'll be the greens that gets us through the winter so in here we got the same peppers that we planted back what it was it june may june and they've been the, the jalapenos are going crazy man um these are red deuce tomatoes i haven't trellised them i got the front end trellis and then i got caught up on something and got behind so those guys are running on the ground this row of tomatoes don't worry about because they're fixing to come up and i'll tell you why in the last planting of cucumbers these are excelsiors so you remember these are the pathonocarpic and the genosius variety so they don't need bees that's why i chose these varieties to put in here for fall production because when it starts cooling off the bees are going to go away so we won't have that but these tomatoes are going to go out this row hasn't had plenty yet because that biggest heater i'm gonna put up in here and i'm gonna need to get the tractor in here to put that up so i'm holding off on planting anything else in here until i get that done all right so the plot directly beside the tunnel is where we got all our cabbage so we got capture thunderhead ruby red or ruby ball improved i'm sorry and then we move on to bronco cabbage moore's head and collards georgia collards and the rest of it is top bunch till you get to the last row and that is rutabagas first time i've grown rutabagas but these things have and guys i transplant them i don't know no i put together a video when i planted these guys but you won't believe it because when i started the video i was calling this rhubarb in this rutabagas so i had to ditch that video anyway i transplanted those a week ago and man they have exploded they have took off to the races big time all right so i'm gonna go down here at the bottom and I'll give you a shot of what we got going on down here you guys don't get to see the bottom part too much um i don't usually particularly uh grow down here throughout the warm season other than just um broccoli and squash and stuff like that but i don't utilize everything but during the fall we use use it for onions and all this will be the onion plot down there will be for probably turnips or something of that nature and we've got some turnips this right here started out to be greens but you can see how it washed out real bad and i don't know if it's going to recover i may have to replant it all of these are purple top turnips you can see they six rows six 100 foot rows with five rows in each one so there's three thousand row feet of turnips here and we'll utilize every one of them we we sell a huge tremendous amount of turnips um kale curly kale lots of auto kale is coming on good everything else is broccoli every bit of this is imperial or marathon broccoli and i plant two different varieties the imperial gets me through the warm season or the warmer part of the season and the marathon gets me through the colder part of the season so lots of broccoli and i still got plenty of broccoli to plant all right we're gonna get up here and get ready oh i gotta show you these two all of these are radishes french breakfast um this is sora the round red radish 
This is Bucasa. It's a purple round radish. And over here we got pearl. It's a white round radish. Um, fall, winter, we sell a lot of radishes. I mean, they're easy to grow too, man. You just put them in the ground and they do their thing. This plot was a... It's a little bit of everything. I got some Brussels sprouts. I got some broccoli. I got some cauliflower. I had a lot of plants that I started. They got really big really quick. And I had this, I had somewhere to put them. I had this weed mat out because of squash and all that. So we got out here and we plugged everything that we could into here. Some of it's not going to make it. Some of it is. And I've got plenty of plants that I can move around or transplant and all this stuff. So yeah, um, this may change. I may even use this for... Um, cabbage i don't know i still got time um we i don't start getting a a little anxious or worried until the end of september if i don't have them in the ground simply because you know we don't cross our 10 hour platform until late late uh, november early december and that's when you know literally nothing grows it just kind of sits in limbo now it will start growing again once you get back into it I've seen that, I've noticed that. And last year, everything that I had in the tunnels, they just kind of stalled. They never really stopped. But then once we got back into the 10 hour range and more, they picked right back up where they left off and started growing again. So I'm not really worried about that. And we're gonna do more growing in tunnels this year. Like I said, I still got those two big tunnels to go get. And we'll probably work on that this week. And I got these two tunnels. I got the one that we're working on, I got this one. And I still got the one that we bought sitting on a pallet in there that I hope to start working on here before the end of the month. All right, so we're going to get ready to start this cold robin. Let me see which ones we got. I know I got Conan. That's the green variety that I grow. And I've grown Quick Start too. And it does really well. Just, I don't know, it like it wants to split once it gets a little bigger. But y'all like my handy dandy seed setup. Um, yeah, I bought this thing up in Asheboro. A place called Steve Stash. And... I didn't get a whole lot for it, and it's actually, it works really, really good for what, I set it on 40 degrees, and I keep seeds in it, and I keep um, vegetables in it. But yeah, this is a red or a purple kohlrabi called Constance. Got it from Seaway. And I'm gonna start two 338 cells today, so that'll be, you know, about 650, 660, 676 plants. So, if we get 600 out of it, that'd be great because it takes about, I don't know, I plan on the 50 foot rows, I plan on six inches apart, so it takes 300 plants for a 50 foot row. So one of those trays right there would do one row. And I've got one row of green and a little piece. I've got two trays started over here for two more rows. So I'm gonna catch up and do two rows of red or two rows of purple and we will probably wind up putting them in here somewhere, maybe in a tunnel, I'm not sure. But yeah, we'll get started on this. I'm gonna kind of show you the process. It's really straightforward, simple. Anybody can do it. And kind of give you a background on how I start these seeds. Cause they're kind of small. They're like, uh, they're almost like uh, kale or collards or broccoli. They are about the same size. And I use a small, I call them thump seeders, but I'll get into all that in a minute. Let me get some uh, soil and some trays and then we'll get at this. All right, guys, so we're getting ready to start filling these trays. What I'm using is Pro Mix BX, um, and I'm sifting it. And this bag has been in here for a couple of days, and it is pretty dry, but we'll fix that here in a minute. But yeah, I'm sifting it out, and it's not bad, but you will get an occasional stick, you know, and they're not big, see, so not like this. But yeah, that's the reason I sift it to keep that stuff out of my trays. So we're going to sift this out, and then we're going to get enough to fill two 338s. And then we'll get the plant. I didn't even bring any trays over here. I got to, I know I got some 338s up here. I'm gonna empty it out. Got kohlrabi. One, two. Right, Make sure they're empty. Sometimes you'll get a little bit of dirt left over in one. So I'm trying to pop out a little bit. Been off and on cloudy for the last three or four days. Um, but it's been cool and the wind's been blowing, so it's been comfortable. So, all right. Nothing out of the ordinary. Everything pretty much straightforward. We're going to take this 338 and just fill it. Not going to pack it. Not going to compress it. We're just going to fill it up. Break it down. Make 
sure all the sails are full. Nothing you know, unusual. And if it seems like I'm explaining this uh, to great lengths, it's because I do get questions sometimes about things that I don't cover at great lengths and makes me wonder if I'm giving you guys enough information and you know I can talk work at the same time never had a problem with that so it isn't any skin off my back if there's something I'm not being clear about make sure you leave me leave it in the comments and uh, you know I can take advice from anybody I don't know what I'll I'm not a pro gardener I just have gotten good at it over the years and know what works for me so we're gonna take this tray here We'll carry it over here to the rack and we're going to water this one in really good get it good and wet like i said this soil is dry it's not crazy crazy dry but it is dry so let me turn the water on we'll get the water and everything in all right so we're going to wet this thing down really good and you can see you know, how dry it looks and basically we're just going to give it a really good sprinkling to get it started and you can see pro mix is pretty good about sucking the water up whether it's wet or dry and it's got a wet agent in it that's why you can't use it if you are an organic form um they won't let you use it i've checked into it trust me and there's a whole backstory on you know our when we started to be organic or naturally gone certified and i won't get into that now but let me tell you this so there is a lot that goes into that anybody that is certified naturally grown anybody who is organic certified they have done their work they have put their work in and they deserve everything that they get because it is a lot that you have to do and have to not do to be certified naturally grown or organic certified i'm gonna just leave it at that i'm not gonna get into all the details but i wasn't ready for it my farm wasn't ready for it my beds were not where they needed to be to get ready for that so for the sake of production and you know the growing year we opted out this year maybe something we'll look at later on but i had i didn't have the time to put into it that i needed to put into it to be successful so i kind of went back to what i knew oh uh, this is looking good already so as you see how it's still pulling the water in but it's just before puddling up that's what I'm looking for. I don't want it overly saturated, but I do want it wet to the point. And another thing is, I go by feel. I feel the weight of it. Yep. Drop it. See how it kind of compresses down in there a little bit more. That's because it's good and wet. And that's okay. What you see is okay. So we're going to do this side and pick that out. And that's a good tray right there. You see how it went down some? So everything in there is not more or less compressed but it filled all the air voids out of it and what we're going to do is plant into that and then we'll put more soil on top of it all right guys so here we have the purple kohlrabi that we're going to plant and this is what i call a thump seeder this is what i was telling you earlier that i use for a thump seeder and basically they got a dial a number that goes around here and you can open it up and you can see the holes in the end of it that just tells you how big you know the bigger the number the bigger the hole so normally what I do is leave it set on two for cabbage and stuff like that. But I'm gonna show you what cold robin seed looks like. Not crazy big, but it's not crazy small either. Kind of middle of the road. Reminds me of broccoli a lot. And if I get it open, uh, these seeds are treated so it's gonna be a lot easier to plant. Cause you can see them, but um, normally they're kind of a darkish brown. I don't know if you can see that. Kind of a green color. Got a coating on it. And uh, yeah, we just put them in the cedar. We're gonna put more than that for sure. And I keep a pair of tweezers because if I oversee, you know, for some, because you can do it with these, I can get them out right then. I don't have to worry about uh, wasting seed and wasting plants when you have to thin them, which kohlrabi you don't really thin. You can plant them in bundles. I know people that plant three to a cell, and that's the way they transplant them out. It's three to a to a hole because that's how they harvest them. And 
That's okay, but we're shooting for a little bit bigger Colt Robbie. We're looking for, you know, not quite softball size, but definitely baseball size, and maybe just a tick bigger than that. So I'm gonna go through, set it on two, and that's basically what you're working with. And I'm gonna flip it just a little bit. See this here? It's full of seed, and we're gonna go through each one of these cells, and we're gonna put one seed in each one of these cells. And you can see I'm thumping it with my finger as I go. That moves the seed to the end. Let's see if I can give you guys a shot. That moves the seed to the end of the little ramp. Sometimes it gets clogged up and you have to and you move along like this and you drop one in every cell. See, and then I need my tweezers to move one of these guys out to the next one. And moving on. Alright guys, so we got the first tray in. You can look, this is what it looks like when you get them in there. And, you know, pretty average, pretty normal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back in here to the um the soil bucket and we're gonna go ahead and put some on the top of this. I'm trying to hold it. This tray's heavy when it's wet. Hold it with both hands. So alright guys, again, nothing out of the ordinary, just basically I'm gonna go over the top of this and I'm gonna sprinkle soil over all these cells. And what I'm basically doing is leveling everything off and filling them up. Rake off the extra. And now we gotta make a tag. So, all right guys, so that's the first one. That's the first tray. Uh, Constance Cold Robbie 915 and I'm gonna leave that sitting there I, I need to water it in but I'm gonna do one more tray here in just a little bit got another tray that I'm gonna do of that same variety but I want to get out here on the tractor and I'm gonna pull these rows up where we're gonna plant this cabbage at either cabbage or call, uh, cauliflower I got enough of both see I want to look and see um, what I got to do to get this cabbage planted today but this is Cold Robbie also this is green Cold Robbie that's Conan it was started on 9 7 so a week ago and that's what it looks like now so kind of gives you an idea of what these others are going to look like i imagine being there purple variety they're going to come out you know a little bit of a different color maybe green leaves purple stems i don't know i've never grown it um so we'll see i'll keep you guys updated on how long it takes to germinate and what it looks like once it comes out of the tray all right guys so i think that's where we're going to call a wrap for this video i hope that gives you a little insight on how to start like kohlrabi broccoli collards you know kale all those seeds of the same consistency same size you would start them the same way um you know you may not start 338 cell trays of them unless you're a market farmer but um you four cell packs six cell packs whatever you saw them the same way so i got the rows pulled up where i'm gonna plant the cabbage you can see i got six rows here i went ahead and pulled that last row of cucumbers it really wasn't doing anything but I got the weed mats out, so what I'm gonna spend the rest of the day doing is rolling these weed mats out. Go ahead and get the staples put in, get everything anchored, and get ready to start burning holes. Now, I don't know that I'm gonna get it planted today. The wind's kicking up and it looks like it's fixing to cloud up, so I'm gonna get as far as I can with the mat and go ahead and get enough rows laid out for cabbage and uh, probably some cauliflower. Um, these 50 set or 50 foot rows, I can put uh, 20 inch spacing on these and get 30 plants per row. So that'll give me 90 cabbage plants and 90 cauliflower plants, which I've got way more than that. So I don't know, I may just do all cabbage here and call it good and done. And then that way we can keep moving towards where we're gonna build this other high tunnel. All right, so stick around later on this week, we're gonna go and probably start taking apart those other uh, tunnels that I bought. And I'm gonna plug a picture in it somewhere in this video so it give you guys an idea. They're a little older, um, the plastic's no good on them but the body's there, the frames are good. So yeah, we're gonna bring them back to this farm and install them on the other side of that 60 foot tunnel. And we're gonna utilize those for spinach, um, lettuce, greens, things of that nature.
all right guys so if you like this video give us a big thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to our channel already reach over here in this right hand corner and click that subscribe button as always guys we appreciate you stopping by we thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one